Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today I have a couple of book reviews for you of books. Unfortunately, I think I waited a bit too long to write the review for. So um, in, in both of these cases, I read them a couple of months ago, maybe a few months ago, and just sat down to write the reviews a couple of days ago. So um, this first one I have a little bit more to say, and then the second one, which I'll show you in the next video, I don't have as much to say, but sort of, uh, like I said in the review, uh, or will say in the review, just some general impressions to share with you. But this first one is a biography of a great poet. It is uh, John Milton, A Hero for Our Time by David Hawks. Uh, this biography was actually written for the 400th anniversary of Milton's birth. Uh, it is a pretty, well, I'll just be honest with you, it's a pretty bad book. Um, mediocre if you're being generous. And uh, to my mind, it's hardly worth being associated with Milton's great name. Um, Hawks argues Rightly, I think that Milton's perennial encounters with religious strife and political contretemps should have us embracing him more as a contemporary and not as an austere figure of worldly timelessness, -ness, timelessness that sort of never changes. But uh, Milton was a world-class heterodox thinker and man. He ceaselessly questioned the authority of institutions including the English monarchy. Uh, he wrote uh, prodigiously against uh, human, obsequiousness, human obsequiousness and uh, obsequiousness and uh, psychological idolatry and led a far from ordinary family life, actually uh, disenfranchising his daughters. Hawke's continued interest in Milton's life derives from his interest in echinoclasm in all forms, not just religious echinoclasm either, and Milton's active embrace of echinoclasm. Uh, one of the few strong points of the book is Hawke's willingness to look at the important texts aside from just Paradise Lost. Uh, he looks at the, pam the pamphleteering, including the Areopagitica, uh, which has paid quite a bit of attention, and Milton's advocacy of divorce and unfettered freedom of speech, which still strike us even 400 years later as ultra-modern. Unfortunately, Hawk seems to be too invested in ideological concerns that I imagine would barely have consumed any of Milton's, uh, Milton's attention. He inevitably wants to connect everything to usury, that is, the practice of loaning out money for a profit, which was relatively uh, a new practice in Milton's time. Milton's father was actually a usurer, um, or I guess uh, probably the more uh, popular name today would be a capitalist. Uh, and this fact is somehow used to interpret in a bizarre, anachronistic mixture of uh, Freudianism and Marxism it used to interpret many of Milton's motivations, both in his poetry and in his uh, pamphleteering. While Milton might have had many opinions that put him outside the mainstream, and he certainly did, he's very much a member of the uh, 17th century when it comes to his opinion on this, that, us that usury means making an idol out of money, when the only thing we should be making an idol out, an idol out of according to Milton, is God himself. Hawks also makes reference to Nietzsche at least twice in the book, one time saying that he fatuously preferred evil over good. I found this ignorance to be pretty surprising from someone who apparently teaches at an American university. Uh, Nietzsche already suffers from enough willful misinterpretation even at the hands of people who know plenty about him uh, than to incur this, someone whose specialty isn't even in uh, 19th century German philosophy. And if he's saying this stuff about Nietzsche, it sort of makes me wonder what he's getting wrong about Milton, a figure about whom uh, and with whom I'm even less familiar. Milton is the indispensable poet uh, for me at least from the last, you know, 
uh, 500 and probably a thousand years. And I think he's the indispensable poet, you know, for his time and for ours. This biography, however, can easily be skipped and probably should be. Uh, it's amazing how this was, at least according to the cover, made book lists top 10 biography pick. Um, sort of flinched at that. Well, I have yet to read either one of these. I do have two more of Milton's biographies, Gordon Campbell's and Thomas N. Korn's John Milton, Life, Work, and Thought, and Anna Beer's Milton, Poet, Pamphleteer, and Patriot. And I found that a quick perusal of both of those shows them to be far superior to Hawks' book. So um, I look forward to reading both of those in the future, and I probably should have looked them over before I decided to read this one instead. John Milton, A Hero for Our Time, by David Hawks.